Rick Cronkite is at the landing site at Edwards Air Force Base in California, Walter. They're experiencing right now, Dan, that fireball effect. Uh, their, uh, their spacecraft uh, would seem to them to be in the middle of a great fireball as they come back into the Earth's atmosphere. And of course here, they're waiting uh, anxiously for the word that they've come through the blackout period uh, and, and are in good shape. That will come in about another uh, 19 or uh, another 14 minutes from now. Out here at Edwards Air Force Base, all is in readiness. Some of the clouds have even uh, disappeared and it's a little clearer than it was just an hour ago when we took air. The wind is still very strong, but they've decided now they're coming in into the wind and the crosswind should give them no problems upon the actual touchdown. It still will give them a problem at altitude as they make the 180 degree, a little more than that, uh, horseshoe turn they've got to make at an altitude of some uh, 25 or 30,000 feet, some uh, six miles down range from here. They come over the base, go down and make that turn, and at that point, that wind is going to want to force them on off course, and that's when Joe Engel is going to have his work cut out for him. Out there on the base, there are a couple hundred men who are ready to uh, rush to the side of the spacecraft just as soon as it uh, comes to a stop on this uh, dry uh, desert lake bed. Uh, and at that point, they will test for uh, all of the gases that could be venting from the craft to be sure it's safe to uh, go aboard and to open up and let the astronauts out maybe a half hour to an hour after they actually get on the ground. All is in readiness at Edwards Air Force Base. The, the visibility is better than had, has been all morning. The winds are still very strong. Back to you, Dan. Walter, uh, I know that at your side there is Leo Krupp, and I wonder, after he talked to the astronaut uh, pilots of the uh, of Columbia after the first space shuttle flight, uh, did they experience any special uh, difficulties that, uh, as they came back into the Earth's atmosphere and faced that, uh, that orange glow and that tremendous heat? What did they talk about uh, that was going through their heads and hearts at that time? Does Leo know? Well, Dan, they didn't... Uh they noticed a lot of things, you know, they were all a bunch of sightseers and they got a, a real big kick out of the fact when they crossed the coastline and uh, could see the, z the ground zipping past and the clouds and everything. And, uh, but uh, they had no ill effects whatsoever and uh, the only real comment they had that I think is significant that we're going to put to rest today is that John Young complained that the weather conditions at landing were so smooth, there was no wind, it was absolutely calm, it was a perfect day. And he complained that if, if the flight control system, if there was anything wrong with the flight control system, he wouldn't know it because the conditions were so benign. Now today, I'll grant you that Joe Engel is gonna know if there's anything wrong with that flight control system because it is really blowing out here. It's gusting to 25 knots, and uh, he's gonna have some problems. Uh, if the flight control system doesn't function properly, he'll, he'll know it. Dan, it also might be pointed out that as far as what they're experiencing right now, both of these men, uh, Engel and uh, Richard Truly, are experiencing it for the first time, uh, whereas uh, uh, the pilot, uh, John Young, uh, the commander of the last flight, had been come back through that same atmospheric uh, uh, fireball situation and blackout, uh, I think, seven times before, or six times, something like that. Thank you very much, uh, Walter Cronkite uh, and Leo Krupp at the uh, Edwards Air Force Base in California. Bonnie Dunbar, uh, very quickly, because we do want to get a, to a station break, is there a way of monitoring the tiles now, now that the tiles are under their, uh, their maximum test on the bottom of that spacecraft? Is, are there machines, electronic equipment in Houston monitoring how well they're holding up? During blackout, there's essentially no communication. However, we have uh, onboard... Uh, data collectors were recording information for post-flight analysis and of course as soon as we come out of the blackout period, w period we'll be getting a thermocouple temperature readings down on the ground. And the spacecraft is uh, rapidly uh, coming down uh, uh, to Earth now, but it's roughly, what, 300,000 feet above the Earth's surface, maybe a little less than that at the moment? I think it's probably down around 250,000 feet, just as, as a guess. We've gone through the peak heating. Gone through the peak heating. We, we should be entering, entering the end of it. And our CBS News coverage of the return of Space Shuttle 2 will continue after this pause for station.